another 55,000 pounds of onions coming at you. Hello, welcome back to Cerbello Farms and the Off the Muck YouTube channel. Today we are grading onions. So the snow is gone, it's rainy, and it's not great weather for grading onions. But the show must go on. So we're working with inventory within the building. We're keeping the doors closed. When you haul onions in, it opens the doors and you get outside weather inside. Wonder how onions are made? Let's go see him now. <laughs> yellow storage onions. The outer layer of the onion, the shuck or the hide, that doesn't come off. Just doesn't look as clean and bright. So when they leave our place, they get shipped to the packer. They have to go through another process of grading them. So they run them again. They run them across the machine that will probably clean them up a little bit better. Then they pack our bulk onions into retail size onions. Whatever size pack that is, it could be two, three, five, ten, twenty-five pound bags, however they decide to do it. They pack the onions into their bags and sell them to the chain stores that supply you with your food. Onions, but the bottom of the hopper has a chain 
that's set by a frequency drive that spins at a certain speed that feeds the line evenly. So if your flow's not right, your equipment doesn't process the onions correctly, uh, the topper, the brusher, and when you go to grade them, if they're too thick, then you can't peel the onions, you know, or there's too much volume going through, or if it's too slow, then you're not getting enough done here today. So that is something that gets played with often. Uh, to keep production as good as you can get it, it requires efficiency and getting stuff done. So the onions leave a hopper, they go up an elevator, and they go on to this star table. This removes uh, loose dirt, leaves, rocks, wood, small onions. onto an inspection belt where we hand grade, it's a rough grade, get all the rocks that this machine couldn't get out, any wood that the machine couldn't get out, and the obvious uh, onions that don't need grade. Majority of the onions 
here are mediums. There are some smaller onions that are coming out. There's some bigger onions coming out, but most of the onions are going on to the final inspection table. And that's where we have our elite graders. These guys really need to know what they're looking at because when it leaves here, and if it doesn't make grade, it can be very costly and you can go backwards real fast. So if you remember Emmy, she's our final inspector. She's the last one to see everything go out. After the inspection table, they go on a cross conveyor to feed the toe filler. We sell all of our onions in wholesale, so they're 2,500 pound tote bags, but we do have them in smaller bags. For the most part, 2,500 pound bags is what we do. This one's ready. Ryan's on the forklift. He's going to lift it up and take it off while the other side's filling. Put a new bag on, lower the cascade, and it'll be ready for when that bag's filling for the next one to start filling. After the bag's taken off the tote filler, it's brought out to the holding room where the onions are stored, waiting for trucks to pick them up. So this room usually holds about five trailer loads. Um, things are busy, so they're taking them just as fast as we can make them. That's due to upcoming holidays and the previous holiday to restock the shelves for that. So Brian's putting a new bag on now. Let's watch it happen. represents our food traceability number so when this load leaves this place and if it has an issue with food safety not meeting us number one i can trace that tag that tag's correlated with a field number we go back to that field number and if there are serious issues then yeah we can trace it back to what field it came from so when we harvest everything brought in in lots we mark those lots we know what lot we're grading out of now that goes on the paperwork and yeah, you can trace it back to where it came from. Trace ability. Weather's well, changed today. We're hauling some onions in. And we got Tim over here hauling onions. In the summer, he does all the mowing on the farm. And we call him Timmy Cutson. So when he transitions to hauling onions, in the fall and winter, his name becomes Timmy Halsey. So if you see him, know what time of year it is. Tim? Tim? What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. Tim. Tim what? Tim? What do you, what's your name in the summer? Cutson. What's your name in the winter? Cutson. Halsen. So we're just breaking into this building now. These are our Bradley. That is a beige variety. And boy, oh boy, do they look good. Don't kill me, Tim. I trust Tim. He's an expert. He's got more miles in reverse in a forklift than I do got going forward. So. Don't worry about Tim. He'll get the jobs done. Tim, you always get the job done, right? Yep. You're the best, right? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Nothing you want to say, Tim? Merry Christmas. Aw. He's such a sweet guy. Get caught up on uh, something we haven't taken care of yet. Don't tell my uncle. But we have not washed the dozer since we were burying the ditch uh, two videos ago. 
but we're getting her cleaned up now. So, better late than never. Stan's doing the power washing. Stan, do you like power washing? Dirty job. It is a dirty job. Today we're here with Logan Scott from Nutrient Ag Solutions and he's running a special new tool that we're trying out for the first time on our ground. So here he is. Hi, I'm Logan Scott with Nutrient Ag out of Marion. Um, I'm a crop consultant so I work with the Cerbello crew, uh, help them with their fertility recommendations and uh, things like that. So today we're out here with the soil optics machine basically scanning the farm and getting a reading on the organic matters and macro and micronutrients in the soil. So this machine basically scans every 40 feet in the field and gets a reading for the whole field instead of taking samples every acre we're getting a whole reading for the whole farm. Um, then what we'll do with this is we'll use this for recommendations for a variable rate either variable rate seedings or fertility application based off the organic matter in the soil. Yeah, to add to that, our initial intent with this is to see the organic matter and adjust our rate of nitrogen that we're using on higher organic matter. We're just not really thinking that we have a, a need for the full rate of nitrogen, so we're thinking that we could try to cut back our nitrogen where the higher organic matter is and keep it the same or maybe elevate a little bit more where there's lesser organic matter where it really does need all that nitrogen to make the size and quality onion that we want. This tube right here sends gamma radiation down in the ground and that's how we're getting our readings and we've got a receiver right here for our GPS and we've got another receiver up mounted up there for uh, it's an RTK system, so basically it's lining us up uh, via GPS. So we're getting every 40 feet uh, of the field. And um, that's basically, this is tied right into my iPad. So as we're going, we can see um, some of the changes. And then when, we're, when we finish the field, it'll basically take the highs and lows and make averages, and it'll send us to pull a couple um, core samples to help calculate it or calibrate the machine so we'll still have to pull a few actual samples but this helps save a lot of time. Yeah this is our Kubota that we have for soil sampling we've got tracks on it. Helps with compaction, helps flotation so we can go out here when it's uh, a little wet and muddy so we don't rip anything up or get stuck. So. Cool yeah it's a sweet little rig. I'm happy with the job it's doing on the ground. Let's take it for a ride and take a look at what's going on inside the cab. Is this a two-seater? Squeeze. Uh oh. Logan. Before we get in here, I just want to let you know that I do have feelings for you, but I, I'm taken. Okay. I'm so, okay. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> for them or <laughs> Where's the beer cooler? Ah, oh, it's in my truck. <laughs> no auto steer in this? Not yet. We're working on it. Yeah, it's going to be a bull crap if you have to stare at yourself and I don't know, I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see, but like the different colors, like where it's kind of getting green and yellow, that's where it seems to be like shallower muck, more gravel. Oh wow. Deeper blue. So I mean, it, yeah, I would agree with that. We're definitely going up and over a gravel spot. So. What color represents what? So the blue is the lower uh, counter rate, basically, that's what they call it. And from my understanding, that's basically how deep the soil is. So the lower the counter rate, the deeper it is, or the higher the number, the deeper it is? The uh, lower the deeper. The lower the deeper. On the muck. On the muck. Yeah, we're coming up on an old here, so that should go higher, right? Yeah, as we get closer to it. So I'm like, so basically I'm pausing it once I get here because I don't want the reading of the goal to screw up. 
so how come you can't use composite samples or core samples to get the organic matter of the ground? Why can't you rely on just that? So we can, but this is going to make us a much more accurate map of where the changes are in the ground. Um, so if you did like a so if you did like a regular composite sample, you'd basically be only pulling you know maybe 10 cores on this whole 30 acre field. Um, so that's not really going to be very accurate for every acre. And then if we did grid samples, you would be a lot more accurate. You know, especially if you broke down an acre grid. But some of these changes are going to be a little tighter than, you, than an acre, so this is a good way to map for that specific organic matter which we're looking for um, because it's going to show those breaks because we're basically covering the whole field. So, how many acres a day you get done? Uh, we could probably do about 100 a day. Is that with the keys to the side by side or without the keys to the side by side? That's you, when you start right away and you got everything going. And you know, oh, take an hour lunch break. Gotcha. I'll probably so, get. So, what hurt. happened this morning? You want to walk me through what happened? Uh, just miscommunications. Let's Whose fault was it though? What well, wasn't mine? <laughs> Can you give any names? Just initials? Just initials. Who was it? Uh, Jack Moran. Jack Moran! You're on YouTube being blamed for screwing up Logan's day. Yeah. Yeah, keys, you need them. So, that's probably like the first thing on the checklist. It's Jack. Rookies. Rookies. So, we're deeper muck here. I haven't changed so fast. 150, 200. So we should be getting on a spot that's pretty shallow. Watch the number. There it is. Hitting 350. This edge is very sandy. According to what it's saying, that I know, it seems to be right on. Pretty cool. Alright Logan, it's been real, it's been fun, but it ain't been real fun. Never is with you. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna try to finagle myself out of here. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, Logan, Lord help me. Well, Logan Scott, Jake Canale, they put this thing together. I'd like to thank them for coming out today. Yes, we do pay them to do this, but this is a privilege to have guys like this working for us, doing these kinds of things to improve our operation, because it does make a huge difference. So, thanks, Nutrien. Take care. Yeah. Peel out. week down last load of onions for the week just left and we're out of here gonna go home and love on my little babies for the weekend so thanks for watching peace subscribe like and share for more videos like this one